Hi, I'm Gerard, and you're listening to The Voice of Truth Podcast, a media production of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We are continuing our family life series, and we'll be looking at biblical characteristics of a husband and a wife. In this series, as we examine the characteristics of a husband and wife, you will hear more emphasis being played or being laid on the husband. And this is because of the intense responsibility that is placed on the husband biblically. Now many persons are married but not all married persons are really husbands or wives. Do you know that in marriage there are many married women who do not have a husband and many married men who do not have a wife? You may be asking then what do they have because a marriage includes a husband and a wife yes that is factual but that does not mean that some married individuals are completing their roles and responsibilities therefore persons are married but are not husbands or wives in the biblical context. <clears throat> what does the Bible say about the roles, responsibilities, and expectations of the husband and wife? 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 3 tells us, Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. There is no big boss in the marriage union. Each is accountable to the other. That is why couples discuss and not dictate. They should view each other as equal. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 and 22 tells us, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Only those who are truly submitted to God can submit themselves to their spouses. A husband cannot submit to the wife, nor the wife submit to the husband, except each is being led in submission by the Spirit of God. Those who are not led by the Holy Spirit will reject this admonition because it seems belittling to them. Thanksgiving to God surely joins a couple in love to God and will cause them to love each other more. While many men are excited about male dominancy, they fail to adhere or recognize the great responsibilities attached to married men. While the women are the gatekeepers of the home, the men are the builders. Therefore, they ought to be careful what building materials are being used on the structure. The strength of the home is determined by the material. If the home is built with straws, it will be unstable. If it is built and grounded with rocks, it is settled. Married woman must know that it is a foolish woman who destroys her home instead of securing it. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 tells us, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. What is expected of the head? I will name a few of the expectations. Priest, provider, protector, friend, companion, lover, builder. A husband is a leader. 
the hierarchy is comprised of God Almighty, who is above all, Jesus the begotten Son, angels, and then humans. Due to the transgression in the Garden of Eden, as pertaining to earthly affairs, women are being dominated by men. This is not a matter of superiority or inferiority. It is a matter of recompense for sin. The male who assumes the position of the head of the wife should be a man who has subjected himself to the headship of Christ. On this note, bearing this in mind, we can say that there are many headless women walking around. A husband should be a priest. Christ is our high priest. It is who he who is our mediator and our representative to God. A husband is expected to stand up as a priest in his home. He ought to pray for his family and to ensure that the words of God are not only taught but adhered to. Can you now understand that not all married men are husbands? Neither are all the head of their wives. A husband is a provider. First Timothy 5 and verse 8 warns us. It says, But if a man provide not for his own, especially those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. This is a warning to all the men who refuse to provide properly as they are able to for their families. A good man will work diligently to provide for his family because that is his responsibility. A lazy man or an uncaring man who does not do his best as a provider is a wicked man. God did not give the responsibility of providing to the woman, but the woman will or may become a provider due to circumstances. A husband is a protector. It is sad that in today's world, many men do not understand the concept of protection. It is a man's responsibility to protect women and children and also the things in the environment and the environment itself. Remember that men are expected to love and follow the principles of Christ, and Christ is our protector. Wives should be in submission to their husbands. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 tells us, Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. We are not talking about persons who are only married. We are hereby referring to a wife and a husband. These positions are held by persons who have submitted themselves to the will of God. In this context, if a woman cannot submit herself to a man who walks in the path set by the Lord, then this woman is unworthy of being called a wife. A wife does not worship her husband, but she treats him as she would treat the Lord. That is why Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 22 tells us, Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Ephesians 5 verse 24 compares the wife to those who are named the church. It reads, Therefore, as a church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. The church is a group of people who are obedient to God and are cleansed and renewed by the blood of Jesus. A wife ought to demonstrate this level of obedience to a husband who is Christ-like in all things. This is not to say that the husband is perfect because he will fall at times but you know the sincerity of his heart and his relationship to God and being a good wife 
you support your husband. Do not tear him down. Do not destroy your home. Being a lover, the husband knows the difference between the terms being loved versus feel loved. A man will declare that he loves a woman, but the woman does not feel this love. Love must be felt. Unfelt love cannot be real. Jesus is the epitome of love. And while you cannot see him, you can feel his love always. A husband should also understand that while he loves to engage in sexual intercourse, his wife loves romance. She loves feeling loved, appreciated, and special. Therefore, he would ensure that she's at that point before seeking his personal fulfillment. He will not only display affection when he's burning, but he will also display a burning affection for his wife. And the wife should do the same. It is not a one road. It's not one way. It's a dual carriageway. So remember to whisper a loving word to each other. Remember special events. Remember to give each other compliments. Remember to give a small token. It doesn't have to be expensive. And do whatever else can be done to allow your partner to feel loved. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4 cements this matter by telling us that the wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Whenever there is marital rape, something has really gone wrong. The principles of marital love were not followed. That's why it would lead to marital rape. So therefore with couples, there should be mutual loving agreement always. Both spouses should always desire each other. Their desire should not be for anybody else. Do you understand what I'm saying? The desire should not be for anybody else. The fire in the relationship should never go out. And that's biblical precept for husband and wife. A husband is a friend. He understands his wife and does not behave disrespectfully towards her. He speaks uplifting words and seeks to build her self-esteem. He assists with household chores so that she'll not be overworked. As a friend, he does not segregate duties by saying this is to be done by females only. He knows that his wife is not a slave. Although there might be pretense when in the relationship, when one is healthy and strong, there might be a pretense of love and being loved. The sincerity or the facade in the relationship will be exposed when there's sickness. So make sure that whatever foundation is being laid is in sincerity. Partners need to communicate well and facilitate a good relationship. A husband understands that while he might be silent with John or desires to find his own solution to a problem, his wife will process, want to discuss the issue, and if he's not responding as she thinks that he should, she may become emotional. Try to understand her, and the wife should understand her husband. A husband is a companion and should, be, should not be separate from his wife for a long time or to be separate early in the marriage. Some of us saying that we're going to work some money, going to greener pasta, and leave our spouses behind us. 
no it is wrong it is wrong you are no longer single you are double and the double becomes one so you can't be leaving your part of yourself behind you you have to take your entire body with you wherever you go you see god takes it so serious that at the time that israel would have been um engaging wars deuteronomy 24 verse 5 tells us when a man takes a new wife he shall not go out with the army nor be charged with any duty he shall be free at home one year and shall give happiness to his wife whom he has taken. So God was saying, listen, you have wars to fight. But the man who is just married, please go and fight the war. And in those days, they weren't taking helicopters to go far. The battlefield would have been within walking distance. But God said, not even that walking distance. The man is not to be leaving his wife. After certain and before certain times. Follow me? Right, because the marriage must be cemented. There are several differences between the operation of the male and the female. And only a man who truly loves will spend time to try and understand the behavior of the female. Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27 is an outline of the wondrous love of Christ. It states, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Remember that not all who are included in this glorious body are persons who had committed sins, and when they repent of their sinful ways, they were forgiven by Christ. So, let me tell you something. You should remember, as I said before, that all who are included in the body, glorious body that is called the church, are persons who had committed sins. And they had repented of their sins, and they were forgiven and cleansed by Christ. None was born perfect, and none was without sin. God expects husbands to love their wives despite their shortcomings good right just as all we would pray and ask the lord to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us remember and if we do jesus said if you don't forgive men their trespass neither will your heavenly father forgive you so we must learn in marriage to forgive each other on this note i caution the men or women who will be unfaithful in their marriage and they claim that their behavior resulted from something that the spouse did or did not do. Don't do it. That's evil. That's wickedness. It is nonsense. There's no excuse for unfaithfulness, bad behaviors in marriage. Because Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. I trust that men are understanding what it means to be a husband. In addition, Ephesians 5.29 says, For no man ever yet ate his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. No husband batters, belittles, or abuses his wife. Any man who does this is not a husband. He is only a married man. Yes, yeah, sad. But he's not acting as a husband should. Regrettably, even in places of worship, many men are married. But many are not behaving as husbands. And many women are married. And many are not behaving as wives. Have you read the warning given in 1 Timothy 3? And verse 7, Likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. This is not telling you that the woman is a, a simpleton or anything like that. 
are made from any inferior material. This is not what it is saying. But it's saying that we have our different characteristics. And even when it comes to physical strength, the men, even though they are women pretending to be men now and men pretending to be women, it can never happen. Because the characteristics that God made a man with will remain with that man. And the characteristics that God made the woman with will remain with that woman. So if the man even does a sex change or the woman do a sex change and they die when the body is dug up, the man who had do the, done the sex change to a female, is his skeleton will still show him as a man. And the woman who did the sex change to a man, the skeletal remains will still show that she was a female. Right? So that's stupidity. That, that is just a waste of money, waste of integrity, waste of dignity, waste of health, waste of everything. Good? All right. So it's best for us not to engage in those things. So it says that you must treat your wife according to knowledge. You know that your wife is emotional. So you expect her to be emotional. When she becomes emotional, don't put her at the point of being emotional. And then you batter her and say, she's this and she's that. You get what I'm saying? Deal with her according to knowledge. Show that you have knowledge. Show that the grace of God is with you. And you work along um, according to the wisdom that God has placed in you. A man who treats his partner badly will not receive the blessings that God has in store. Remember I said, your prayers will not be answered. That's what First Timothy 3, 7 tells you. Your prayers will be hindered if you do not treat your, your wife according to the biblical precepts set by God. Good? So I want men to tread cautiously. Women be warned also, right? Because don't take advantage of the situation to say, oh yes, right? Don't do it. Be warned that if you are disruptive, if you are rude and disrespectful, you will also lose your blessings. Right? Because God is not going to sanction you. Why it is important for males and females to love, honor, and respect each other? Ephesians 5.20 supplies the answer. It says, For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Yes, both males and females were made from the same substance. We were made in the image and likeness of God. We ought to respect each other because none is better or more worthy than the other. The only persons who could be deemed more worthy are those who are living in, in obedience to the will of God. So we are all made of the same material. But those who have submitted to God and living in obedience to God as an edge above those who are living in sin and have not accepted Christ. There are some third parties who love to get involved in marriages. In-laws, lovers on the outside, neighbors, whatever. There ought to be no intruders in a marriage because Ephesians chapter 5, 31 and Genesis 2, 24, 1 about the sacredness of marriage. It reads, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they two shall be one flesh. If two is fused into one, how can another be accommodated? All mistresses and sirs involved as lovers in people's marriage please be warned that you shall receive severe punishment from god in this our present biblical age there is no room for concubines when you engage in such you are going against godly principles many do not do not understand the oneness principle because they lack understanding of the things of God. Ephesians 5 verse 32 emphasizes, This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Only those who understand godly matters can be the scriptural husband or the wife. 
In summary, Ephesians 5.33 says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular soul of his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Reverence is a very strong word to use to describe how the wife should react to her husband. In this context, the word means to admire and to respect. It doesn't mean to worship. But do you notice what the husband had to do before he got the reverence, the respect and the admiration? He said he should love his wife as he loves himself. And wives, I realize that there are many good men who end up getting some bad women bad behaving women as wives and there are many good women who end up getting some bad behaving men as husbands I trust that you will consider what you have heard today and that you'll fix your life so that you can be the husband or the wife as God wants you to be and that you'll be able to build a home and nurture the kind of children that God would bless you with. Children who come from a solid foundation will display better behavior. God bless you and keep you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you. We thank you for the institution of marriage. We thank you for the principles that you have set in place. We recognize that many things have been done to destroy marriage. But we are sure that your principles shall never pass away because you are the supreme God. I pray for every married person at this time will reach out to you. I pray that you'll give them the wisdom to heal and to amend their ways and to restore their marriage to the standard that you want it to be. I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to their hearts. And for those who are considering marriage, I pray, Lord, that they will consider all that they need to do, what is expected of them, and to know exactly what it is that they are getting into. That they know that marriage is not for status or for pleasure, but marriage is an institution that you have put in place to build families who will represent you on earth. Forgive us of all our sins, I beg, and blot out our transgressions. And help us to walk and to live in righteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is the Voice of Truth podcast, a media production of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We would love to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment. Now remember, please like, share, and become a subscriber today.